I'm Joshua Bardwell, and you're going to learn something today. I finished installing the new flight controller in my quadcopter, and when I plugged in the battery to test it out, it was dead. Nothing. Not even an LED came on. But then I disconnected one wire, and it came back to life. I'm going to walk you through every step of this really fascinating troubleshoot. Stay tuned. One of the principles that I live by is that when I'm doing a build, I test every component of the build as I install it. Uh, this saves me from the problem where you finish a whole build and then you plug in the battery and you've got a short or you've got some dead component and you just don't know where it is. You have to pull the whole thing back apart again to figure out where the problem is. If you test everything as you go, then you'll find the problem and you'll know it was whatever the last thing that you installed was the thing that had the problem. And this led me to a really weird, f fascinating situation when I was installing the Matek F405 on my new quadcopter. And let me tell you in advance that the problem turns out to have been a problem with one of the one of the boards. Okay, this was not a soldering error or an installation error. It was a defective board. And these are the times that put reviewers like me uh, <laughs> to the test, if you will, because. I'm, I, you know, if I get one bad board, I, maybe I was unlucky. I hate, and I'm, my word is going to carry a lot of weight. I feel like these boards are solid. The, the quality control is generally good, but I got a bad one, and, and I, gosh, the troubleshoot's interesting, and I wouldn't be honest. I wouldn't be living up to my obligation as a reviewer if I then just like, well, that was probably a fluke, and I swept it under the carpet. <laughs> so here's what happened. I tested the VTX. Uh, let's sit down for a minute. I tested the VTX as I installed it. I plugged in the batteries, and in fact, we can do this right now. There we go. And let's set that aside for a minute. And where's my battery? There it is. Plug in the battery. But notice I, I always use the smoke stopper at all times on the bench, even when it might not be needed. I notice also I've got. A, uh, antenna plugged in here to the VTX so I don't I don't damage it by turning it on without an antenna so anyway when I plugged in the VTX and then I got my multimeter and I set it to DC volts and the first thing I did is I just tested the 5 volt output you know I just want to make sure that it's outputting what it's supposed to be outputting now a trick that I use is let me zoom in here real quick now you can see right here that we've got a ground pad, it's labeled G, and a 5 volt pad, it's labeled 5 volts, and you might be tempted to just measure continuity there, but be careful because if you accidentally touch the together and short, you could damage the 5 volt regulator. So I always like to get ground from somewhere far away from where I'm probing. So for example, um, which of these is a ground pad? There we go. See, that's a ground pad right there. So I'm just going to get my ground from right here as my ground reference. I'm going to measure 5 volts right here. And you can't see the multimeter, but trust me, it reads 5.06 volts. So great. So the 5 volt regulator is working correctly. I can also see that I've got these nice little LEDs here. Everything seems to be working right. And if I was really detail oriented, I could even pull out my Immersion RC RF power meter and verify that it's transmitting power. But I didn't do that. So this is working great. Okay, fine. The next thing that I did was I then hooked up the flight controller. And when I did that, and I'm not going to show you this because I don't want to, it would damage things if I showed you this too much. But the next, I, when I power plugged the battery in, nothing powered up. Not the flight controller and not the video transmitter either. And that's pretty weird because I know the video transmitter was working correctly. And that leads us to this really fascinating troubleshoot. What could cause when you plug a new component in, what could cause the whole system to act like there's no power getting to it? If you want to, pause the video for a minute and think about what you think the answer might be. And now you are back and I'll tell you what the answer is. A common thing that could cause that is that the voltage regulator that's powering the system is being shorted to ground. So it's trying to put out 5 volts, but that voltage is being sucked right to ground, and so the overall voltage potential of the system is 0 volts. But I didn't know that yet. 
the first thing I did was I disconnected <laughs> the flight controller and the PDB, sure enough, came back to life. I mean, I thought, heck, did it just die spontaneously? So, what we've got then is a scenario. Let's build this scenario here. We've got a scenario where we've got the ribbon cable here, and we'll go ahead and install that. Okay, we've got the ribbon cable here, and when we install the flight controller, the whole system shuts down. So, the first thing I did was I said, hey, did I even install the ribbon cable the right way around? And let me show you how I verified that. What I did is I put my, my uh, multimeter into continuity mode. I'm going to set that off to the side because you don't actually need to see anything there. In continuity mode, when there's continuity between the probes, it beeps. I have a whole video about continuity mode and using continuity mode to test things. And then what I did is I didn't want to test the flight controller under power because if you short a power rail to ground, like with your probe, then you're going to damage something potentially. And I didn't want to do that. So the simplest thing I could do to make sure that the ribbon cable was installed the right way around is this. I'm going to put, find a ground pad and ground the ground plane on electrical devices almost always has just continuity everywhere. So every ground pad has continuity to every other ground pad. Okay, so that's, that's an easy way to test if two things are connected is by testing for continuity on the ground. And what I did was I put one probe on a ground pad, like so, and then, now let's just make sure we have ground. Yeah, so this guy has continuity to ground. We know we're grounded. I very gently uh, wiped across the end of this with the, the probe. And I don't, you want to be very gentle because you can damage the ribbon cable very easily, but you'll see that as I, oh, I come across, I can see I definitely have continuity to ground on some of these pins. And we can also do that test on the 5 volts because we can assume that at least one of these is carrying 5 volts to the flight controller from the regulator here on the board. So let's just double check that. I'll touch 5 volts here. Again, this board is powered down. There's no 5 volts here. We're just testing for continuity and I'll gently wipe across and sure enough, one of them has continuity to 5 volts. So we could certainly test other ones. Presumably the signal wires are in there too, so I could test that and so on. So I know for a fact that I've got this ribbon cable installed correctly, that the ribbon cable itself is functioning right. So then, the next thing I want to do is I'm going to go ahead and install this as it was. I'm going to try and figure out why the whole thing won't power up. And by the way, I, I did verify by unplugging, as I think I already said this, I unplugged it and everything came back to life. So I knew that I had some fishy thing going on that had to do with the flight controller being connected. So when I do my continuity tests here, I'm going to want to make sure that these guys aren't touching because I don't want to get a situation where there's continuity because they're touching by accident. I want any continuity to occur. They wouldn't be touching in real life, right? So I want any continuity to occur through the ribbon cable or through the way it would be in real life. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to check for continuity between the 5 volt pad and the ground pad. I know that the 5 volt regulator on the PDB is what's powering the flight controller and so if you plug it in and the whole thing doesn't power up the next question that you might ask is is the 5 volt line being shorted to ground? And sure enough if I test that here's 5 volts right here and since this is powered down, there's no risk of shorting anything. So I can just come right in here and get this ground pad right here. I wouldn't do this if it was powered. I would get ground somewhere else so I didn't risk accidentally touching the probes together and shorting out the 5 volt rail. But you can see if I do this, there's continuity. Sure enough. Now, that is never, never a good thing. You never want continuity between any power rail, 5 volts, 12 volts, VBAT, whatever it is, you never want continuity between the power rail and ground because what it means is that any voltage on the, I'm calling, I'm saying the power rail, that's just a term that electrical people use, is the 5 volt output. You never want that continuity because any voltage potential applied to the rail will result in current flow directly to ground.
And that can damage things because there's no resistance. There's very, very low resistance. It means that the current flow will be very high and you're very likely to burn out the regulator to overheat it, or even in some cases, burn out a trace. If you short a LiPo voltage to ground, you're gonna burn up a trace on your board and basically fry the board. That's a good thing, frankly. If you short something to ground with a LiPo that doesn't go poof, then the LiPo is gonna go poof. <laughs> so that's bad. So the good news is that I do not appear to have damaged the five volt regulator on the FC hub. And that's actually kind of impressive because I had the battery plugged in for, oh, well, you know, a, a minute maybe. And the whole time it was doing that, the regulator's just dumping current to ground. And maybe the regulator has some kind of current protection or over temp protection built in. I, I have no idea about that. But the bottom line is the regulator doesn't appear to have taken any damage. It still puts out a solid 5 volts whenever you plug in. But we still haven't answered the question of where the continuity is coming from. And here's where this plate gets really, really mysterious. So we know that the continuity occurred when we attached the flight controller to the ribbon cable which suggests that there is a, a short in the flight controller, right? Somewhere in the flight controller, five volts is shorted to ground, and that means that when we attach it, we get the short. So the thing to do then, process of elimination, right, is to disconnect the flight controller, and we'll just verify that that short is gone now. So we'll test five volts and ground. There's no short in the FC hub. Good. We, we, I, there wasn't. We knew there. We knew that, but because we measured five volts, right? We measured that this had five volts, and if there was a short there, we would measure zero volts or some very, very low voltage. So, so we know the FC hub is fine, and then that leads us to the, the the supposition that there must be a short here, but there isn't. Watch. I test. Uh, where's five volts? Hello, hello, hello. There we go. Five volts and ground. 5 volts and ground and this is where things got really freaky weird because there's no short here so neither of these devices has a short and yet somehow when you put them together the short exists that's pretty freaking weird let me tell you how the troubleshoot went next the next thing I did was I got another freaking flight controller I was like well maybe something about this one's screwy I'll try the other one and sure enough I, I, the same thing happened. Now, if I swap the flight controller and the same thing happens, that tells me pretty definitively that the problem is not in the flight controller. So then we enter the whole process of elimination thing. The next thing I did was I swapped the ribbon cable. The same thing happened. And then again, process of elimination, I swapped the FC hub out and the problem went away. So with all the fishing around with the multimeter is nice to give us information about what's going on, but ultimately it just came down to process of elimination. Potentially the information the multimeter gave us could have helped us in find the problem. If I had found a short in the flight controller, then I wouldn't have needed to do any more process of elimination. I could have just known that the flight controller was defective. But that we still haven't answered the question of how this weird, mysterious scenario where neither of these devices has a short, but when you put them together, suddenly there's a short. And I think I know the answer. If you look at the pinout for the ribbon cable on the FC hub, there is a place where there is a 5 volt pin and a ground pin right next to each other. And actually, there's two 5 volt lines and two ground lines right next to each other because the traces on the ribbon cable are very thin. And in order to carry the current without a lot of heat buildup, you use double the traces. There's 16 traces in this ribbon cable, so there's plenty to spare. So we've got two 5 volts and two grounds. And what that means is if the cable goes into the socket slightly off, if the pins don't align, you will still get 5 volt and ground conduct conductivity but one of these five volt pins will be putting five volts onto a ground line on the ribbon cable. But that doesn't matter as long as the other end of the ground cable is floating in the air. It's just a dead, it's just a dead end, right? But as soon as we connect the flight controller, now the five volts on the FC hub connects to ground on the flight controller, and we've got the short that shuts the whole thing down. That's pretty cool. So 
I hope this has been educational to you about how I troubleshot this thing, how I go through this process of, of troubleshooting. Continuity testing is not sexy, but it's the, pro the process of elimination and the methodical troubleshooting is a skill that a lot of people coming into this hobby don't have. And if, if you're experienced at this and you're going, yes, yes, oh, very interesting, good for you. But if you're new to this, I hope that you're able to pick up on some of that. The other thing to say is, sadly, <laughs> one out of the two FC hubs that I got from Maytech were defective. To those who say, oh, I'm sure these manufacturers all cherry pick stuff. No, no, they don't send me cherry picked stuff that's better. They just call, they called Surge at PuroFlip and said, Surge, send this guy a couple things out of your inventory, please. And he he just grabbed them off the shelf and one of them happened to have a defect oh well uh, the good news is that this board if I was Joe average consumer and if for some reason I didn't want to try to get warranty repair and let's hope that that Maytech would make good on this and do warranty repair uh, but if I wasn't able or didn't want to do that the good news is that I do have these direct solder pads here and those same pads exist on the uh, the flight controller so I'm not out of luck. I can just run a couple of wires if I so desire and still get some use out of this. That's going to do it for this video. Hope it's been educational. Leave your questions down in the comments. I'll answer them. I, I, these are almost all of my comments. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Happy flying.